The Bible. So again, the Bible had the Apocrypha in it. It was removed in 16 after 1611. So why do you think they removed a book that would prove the earth was flat? Additional books that would verify flat earth, verify where Pharmakia really came from. That talks about the fallen ones, the Nephilim, the giants. They want you guys thinking that there was dinosaurs, but really they're trying to hide the giants. When they find those huge bones, those are bones of giants, but they're telling you it was a dinosaur. That's right, y'all been lied to for a long time. There's a lot of people that try to refute flat earth, but you can't. You can't, the Bible proves that the earth is flat. Flat earth has never been refuted. The people that try to flat refute flat earth, those people, they're globalists. These are the same people that are trying to get you to take the... We're not, this, the Bible supports a flat earth. Why do y'all think if I say this word right here, the live stream goes bye-bye? What are they trying to hide? They can't go to space. You cannot get through the firmament. That's in the Bible. The firmament's in the Bible. They want you to believe you're living on a spinning ball when the Bible says you're not. The Bible says you're living on a fixed foundation. This is why people that watch a lot of tell, lie, vision, when you speak the truth to them, they're like, a lot of people don't know this, but before the heliocentric model, the Ptolemy model was the standard, or in other words, the geocentric model was the standard for basically all astronomers, astrologers, mathematicians, and scientists. And they all knew that the Earth was the center of the universe and that it was stationary. And they depicted the sun, moon, stars, and the wandering stars orbiting above and around the stationary geocentric Earth. Ptolemy lived in Alexandria, Egypt during the second century AC and is considered the most important astronomer of antiquity. He even wrote a book called The Mathematical Collection so he was a mathematician and an astronomer, and he was brilliant. For 1400 years, up to the 16th century, all astronomers, Greeks, Muslims, and Christians worked within the Ptolemaic system with additions and corrections to the basic structure created by Ptolemy. And the moon was also considered a planet back then. In fact, the planet nearest to Earth is the moon, which completes a single revolution around the Earth in about one month. Further out are the rest of the planets, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So there were seven planets back then, which included the Sun, the Moon, and the rest of the planets that I just mentioned here. And Ptolemy's astronomy was based on the physics of Aristotle which separates the activities of the sublunar world and the supralunar world. According to Aristotle, the supralunar world is made up of a special material which differs from the material on Earth. Here's the good part. This material is called ether, aka the firmament. Ether is a very hard material but lighter than anything known on Earth. Ether's main feature is its circular motion, and thus all the stars, by their nature, move in circles. And time-lapse videos of the stars prove that. All of the stars are located within a single sphere. This sphere revolves around the Earth and completes an entire revolution every 24 hours. Basically, this was a working mathematical model of the universe. Alright, so I grew up believing what everybody else believed, that the earth is round. Then I started doing more studying in my Bible, and it tells you in Genesis that the earth has got a firmament 
that divides the waters from the waters. There's waters above the firmament and waters below the firmament. That's why man has never been to the moon, not one single day in the world. And all the satellites are sitting there floating up around in this firmament, but they don't want you to know that either. Even though they declassified all the documents from NASA, you can go look them up, admitting that it is a just a, a, a flat plane, and it does not move or rotate. I don't understand why it's so hard to believe that, except for... Because the Rothschilds has been teaching y'all that bunch of crap ever since y'all got into the public school system. I went to Christian school system. Did they teach flat earth? No, they didn't. But they didn't recognize the Becca school system because we didn't follow the guidelines of the public schools. We were actually educated. Y'all were de-educated. I learned more from the time I was in kindergarten to eighth grade than I ever did in my whole entire life. Ninth grade... Let ten, all the way through 12th it was like a rerun of 4th grade but everybody's out here so smart then I was asked well okay well if the earth is flat then why don't the water run off the edges well there's an ice wall there and there's called a firmament and it tells you the dimensions of the firmament it keeps everything in we got our own little thing inside here uh, it, it's I don't understand, you know, if you've been in one country and you went from one city to the next and you realize how small you actually are compared to everything else that's going on in the world, then you want to tell me that you can't believe that? I mean, you can't believe that, okay, and gravity, okay. But we're spinning at 666 million or 1,000 miles an hour, and at the same time, we're freaking... Not spinning off the earth or anything like that. It, it's, it's such a big bunch of bull crap. But this new gen, the, the old generation baby boomers, man, y'all don't want to believe anything. Y'all been fooled for so darn long that if you was to wake up now, literally, you might have a heart attack. Because the fact is that you feel stupid that you believe something that was fed to you for so long. I would rather find out the truth than keep on believing a lie. But anyways, have a great day. Uh, yeah, conspiracy theories, whatever. Even though the government's admitting to all of them now. I actually was one of the reasons why I ended up leaving the church. Um, because I was a ministry school teacher. In what I now call a Christian cult. But we were very evangelical, spirit-filled, only did what the Holy Spirit said to do. We were very Holy Spirit led. Um, I was a teacher in the school of ministry. Uh, I was a worship leader, all kinds of stuff. And I was in the process of creating my, my first lesson on the book of Revelation for our year three students. And this was probably the biggest passion of mine since I was a Christian. Um, the book of Revelation is the one thing that I studied the most. Uh, for over 20 years so in researching my lesson for the book of revelation i came across the scriptures about the four corners of the earth which is something that i had prayed and asked god about for many years before and during that time of genuinely wanting to know what this meant and not wanting to teach people something wrong and lead them astray um, I felt led, whatever that means to people, because I'm not even a Christian anymore, but I felt led at the time that I needed to start at the beginning. And so I went to Genesis chapter one and in Genesis chapter one, it's the creation of creation. <laughs> and it literally describes a flat earth that God created a flat earth and that he put a firmament dome. Um, and I, all of that stuff jumped out at me and I researched the Hebrew of all of it and that made sense that way of creation of creating the world made sense way more sense with everything else that was in scripture about how god describes the earth and where he is and it did a lot for me and i ended up finding out through the research of flat earth a lot about secret societies like freemasons um knights of malta all kinds of stuff, the Jesuits and stuff like that, which I have a lot of content on this channel about all of those and people call me out all the time. I don't care. 
Um, but that's how I found out about it. Um, and then found out that my pastor was a part of one of these things. And so we left the, that church and eventually left the entire church altogether. So people who become flat earthers don't do it overnight. It takes a lot of time and research to change the way you view creation. Hey friends, have you ever wondered why they tell you to never look at a solar eclipse? I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna blow your mind. In these images of a real solar eclipse, you're gonna to start to notice something. Notice the color of the eclipse portion and the color of the sky. Here's another picture. Check it out. The color of the eclipse portion compared to the color of the sky. Have you noticed something? I have. But don't be distracted by these CGI images that NASA likes to feed to you online. That's fake. And that's fake. Those aren't real images. But this is, this is, this one is, and this is. So you've probably noticed by now that the sun is actually invisible in the eclipse portion. That makes no sense because, wait, hold on. The sun is, an, is, is a ball of gas in outer space and the moon is just a dusty rock. Oh, contraire. The sun is actually a great light, and the moon is a lesser light. And during a solar eclipse, the moon is during its new moon phase. It is devoid of light. The moon is empty. It is empty. That's why this empty portion is coinciding with the sun. And when that happens, you can see directly through the great light. You can see directly through the sun. None of these things are three-dimensional above us. They're all inside the firmament. Boom. Read the Book of Enoch for further explanation. During a new moon, moon devoid of light, it is empty. The emptiness is inside the sun. The sun is passing through the moon during a solar eclipse. There was a solar eclipse during the uh, crucifixion of Christ. Luke 22, I think. A solar eclipse during the crucifixion of Christ? That sounds coincidental. No, it's not. Because Christ, God, created everything you see. Everything you see. And that is a symbol. It's a symbol. It's a ring. It's a symbol. The sun is a ring around the moon, just like Christ is around us. He's, he is our salvation. He provides it. Eternal life. It is a symbol in the sky. Everything above us is part of a clock. It rotates above us. The earth is flat. There is no outer space in a physical sense. It is all spiritual above us, guys. So don't be distracted by Google. All these mainstream, big budget media elitist crap. It's all BS. This image is crap. It doesn't exist like that. That's more like it. That's more like it. Download the Skyview Light free app. Just get it and watch the sun and the moon during a new moon. And ask yourself, why can I see directly through the moon? And why are they lined up together? You guys, it is a circuit above us. Amen. Praise Jesus. Nothing gets past the firmament.